Chapter 6 Your Secret Weapon Dividend Reinvestment A stock dividend is something tangible. It's not an earnings projection, it's something solid, in hand. A stock dividend is a true return on the investment. Everything else is hope and speculation. Richard Russell It should be evident by now how appealing dividend growth investing is for retired people. They need their investments to produce income for them, and that income needs to grow over time to keep pace with inflation. Dividends are the perfect way to do that. What if you are still working and adding to your portfolio? Are dividends relevant for you? Most people assume dividends are for retired folks only. That couldn't be further from the truth. Those dividend payments have to go somewhere. If you aren't spending them on groceries, what will you spend the money on? Stocks, of course. Dividends are available to be reinvested back into more dividend-paying stocks. The result is two forms of compounding, the dividends and the number of shares you own. As the number of shares you own increases, so does the future income, and the virtuous cycle compounds on top of itself until it can't be stopped. Let's see how it works. The Incredible Power of Reinvested Dividends I know you're tired of Coke now, but let's revisit it one more time. You just bought your 25 shares of Coca-Cola at $40 per share. You get the same $33 worth of dividends in year one. In this case, you're not taking the $33 out to spend like in our last example. You reinvest it back into Coca-Cola's stock instead. This is known as dividend reinvestment. How many additional shares would your $33 buy? Well, that depends on the stock price. If Coke's stock is trading for $100 per share, you won't be able to buy as many new shares, and vice versa. To keep it simple, let's say the price stays at $40. Your $33 dividend would buy an extra 0.83 shares. Here's where you start to make some hay. In year number two, you have 25.83 shares instead of 25. That's an increase of 3.3% over the prior year. And on top of that, Coca-Cola is going to increase the dividend by 6% per share. You increase your dividend income from $33 in year number one to $36.14 in year number two. That's an increase of 9.5%. Now you have $36.14 to do something with. Of course, you're not going to spend this money on anything but more shares of Coke at this point, are you? If the stock price stays at 40, your $36.14 can now buy 0.9 more shares. That brings your total share count to 26.7 shares. The same thing happens in year number three. Your share count goes up as you reinvest your dividends, and the dividend goes up when the company increases it each year. As both increase, your dividend income grows. This allows you to buy even more shares, and the cycle goes on and on. Over time, these reinvested shares start to add up and compound. The chart on the attached PDF shows how those shares grow over time. By year number 20, your reinvested dividends have purchased you more than three times your initial share count. You now own 73 shares of Coca-Cola. Not only have you been growing your share count, but the dividend has been growing as well. That makes your dividend income go absolutely bonkers. Just look at the chart on the attached PDF. The gray line shows your dividend income if you don't reinvest the money. The black line shows your dividend income if you reinvest your dividends. With the reinvested dividends, you would collect $2,238 in dividend income over 10 years. That is double your initial investment of $1,000, and we haven't even gotten to price yet. What would my rate of return be? Coca-Cola's stock price hasn't budged from $40, so you don't make any money from its price appreciating. Don't be too sad, though. You still would have made a fortune. At $40 per share, your 73 shares would have a market value of $2,944 at the end of year 20. Even though the stock price went flat for 20 years, you would have still earned a $1,944 profit. That is almost triple your initial investment. Please don't miss what happened here. You invested in one of the most stable, boring companies on earth. They did not grow their dividend all that fast. 6% isn't impressive. Not only that, but the stock price didn't go up a single dollar. 
Despite your bad pick, you still made a 194% profit over a 20-year period. That's the real genius of the dividend strategy. You don't have to be good at picking stocks. You don't even have to be average at it. You can be the worst stock picker on earth and still make an impressive profit. But what if Coca-Cola's stock price crashes? Won't I lose my money? Dear Wall Street, please skip this section. Warning, do not repeat what you hear in this section. Your friends will look at you like you've lost your mind, and they will think you have, but you haven't. Here's the shocker. As a dividend investor, you would prefer that the stock market go down in value, not up. Please don't stop listening. Let me explain. We went through an example with Coca-Cola stock staying at $40 per share. Now let's assume its stock falls to $20 immediately after you buy it, and the stock price never recovers, not even after 20 years. Can you imagine the chaos this would cause on Wall Street? Account values halved with no hope for any positive returns. But you? You'd be jumping for joy. Here's why. In year number one, you still receive your $33 in dividend income like you did in our previous example. Always remember, dividend income and stock prices are not linked. The stock price falling to $20 does not mean the dividend goes away. When the stock price was $40, your $33 of dividend income purchased an extra 0.83 shares. With the price now at $20 per share, your dividend reinvestment buys twice as many shares, an extra 1.65 shares after year number one. In the second year, your dividend income would be $37.31. If the stock stayed at $20, that's good for another 1.86 shares. The lower the price, the more shares you can buy. So if the price stays at $20, you're going to get rich real quick. When Coca-Cola's stock price stayed at 40, you were able to accumulate 73.6 shares over 20 years. With the stock price at $20, you would be able to build an astounding 244 shares. That nets you $4,381 in total dividend income. In year number 20 alone, you received $812 an 81% return on your initial investment in a single year. And that's not even the best part. The value of your shares at the end of year 20 is higher at $20 per share than it would be if the stock had remained at 40. Your Coca-Cola stock would be worth $4,069, quadruple your initial investment. Do you see the absurdity of this? The dividend strategy is so robust that you quadruple your money even though the stock price fell by 50%. Is this realistic? If you're listening to this for the first time, you might think it sounds too good to be true. It's not. In fact, it gets better. Not only do dividend stocks provide the opportunity, but you can do it with a high degree of success. If you watch the financial media much, you'll hear them brag about a triple bagger they called. They'll tout the next insert social media or fancy tech stock here that's going to triple in value. Here's the problem. Picking the next Facebook, Microsoft, or Google isn't likely. Even if you do eventually hit a home run on an investment, you'll likely have plenty of strikeouts trying to find it. Picking winning tech or social media stocks is like gambling at the casino. You might hit it big once or twice, but the longer you play, the more certain you will lose. Dividend growth investing is the opposite. The more you play, the better your odds. You don't even have to pick winners before they become winners. Identify companies that are already winning. Buy them for their growing dividend income stream. You won't triple your money overnight, but you will eventually. You were able to triple your $1,000 investment in Coca-Cola without much effort. All we did was predict that Coca-Cola is going to continue growing their dividend over the next 20 years. That seems likely considering they've raised the dividend for 52 consecutive years. Why would the next 20 be any different? We didn't assume any crazy growth rates either. Coca-Cola has grown their dividend by more than 6% in the past. No one applauded them for the dividend in any of those years. Their CEO was never on CNBC promoting the next big product launch. It was boring, and it was predictable. I don't know about you, but I prefer my investments to be boring and predictable. Dividend growth investing takes the pressure off of you picking winning stocks. Let the power of growing dividends do all the work for you. It is possible for you to build wealth without jumping in and out of stocks or timing the market. A growing stream of dividend income is the investment answer you have been seeking. 
Back to Jim and Sally. Let's go back to Jim and Sally from earlier chapters. Let's say they pick up a copy of this book and decide that dividend growth investing is for them. If their advisor is not an expert in dividend growth investing, they can transfer the money to someone who is. Jim and Sally buy shares in 30 dividend growth stocks with an average dividend yield of 3%. Their portfolio consists of companies they know and love. In the first year, Jim and Sally collect $15,000 in dividend income. The cash is automatically paid into their bank account on a monthly basis, just like a paycheck. In year number two, Jim and Sally receive a 6% pay increase. The $15,000 worth of dividends last year increases to $15,900 next year. Then it grows again in the third year. The chart on the attached PDF shows how the dividends growing at 6% grows faster than their spending. After 20 years, Jim and Sally will be spending $26,300 per year. Their dividend income would be $45,300 per year. And the best part? They didn't have to sell a single share of stock to earn that rising income. What about market value? As long as Jim and Sally spend only the dividend income, they don't have to worry about market prices moving up or down. Mr. Market no longer has any control over their lives. He still offers them a new price on their dividend stocks every single day, but they never take him up on it. They are content to hold on to their shares of high-quality dividend stocks. Why would they sell? As long as they keep collecting the cash dividends, owning these companies is a no-brainer. Dividend growth investing enabled Jim and Sally to grow their income and sleep well at night. They have taken care of their expenses regardless of what Mr. Market's mood is on that particular day. Not only that, but Jim and Sally have never touched the principal. They will have a large inheritance that they will be able to leave to their children. There will be doubters. A lot of people out there will tell you that owning a portfolio of individual stocks is pointless. You should buy an index fund and forget about it, they'll say. We'll talk about that in the next chapter.